Chartering Rules Committee to order, tonight being November 5th at 6.35. And with me, um, I'm Linda Vakin, Ward 5 City Councilor and Chair of this committee, and City Council President, Ward 7 Councilor, Todd McGee is with us, and by phone, and also by phone, Councilor at Large, Howie Greeny is with us. Also present are Terry Murphy and yes. Councillor McGivern and Councillor Bartley and Councillor Sullivan. So I'd like to open up the meeting and I'll accept a motion to take up item one. Move motion to take, to take up, up item, item one. one. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So item one is a resident's petition calling for the resignation of Holyoke Mayor Alex Morse submitted to the full council on 9-21-20. The petition was received at that meeting in the full city council. And I just wanna read the petition into the record for purposes of our meeting. We, the undersigned registered voters of Holyoke, call for the resignation of Mayor Alex B. Morris and petition the Honorable City Council to pass a resolution calling for the resignation of Mayor Alex B. Morris. We seek this based on the actions of inappropriate sexual conduct by Alex B. Morris, Mayor, City of Holyoke. He is no longer able to effectively and credibly serve as mayor. We further request the Holyoke City Council to call for a general meeting of citizens to discuss the above stated purpose pursuant to section eight of the Holyoke City Charter and the Massachusetts State Constitution. Now, the petition was signed and certified by over 50 voters. And so the city council has referred it to this committee to set up the meeting as required by our charter. Um, in the city council meeting, there were concerns raised relative to the request by the petition that the city council pass a resolution. And so legal, our legal department was asked to weigh in relative to the petition and she addressed certain rights and requirements relative to the petition. I think it's important for everybody to have a good understanding of this. And so I want to read it in most of its entirety into the record tonight. Um, I received it a couple days ago. I sent it to the committee. I'll make it available to the full council also. So it's dated November 3rd regarding the citizens petition under city charter section eight. Dear counselors, you had requested an opinion from our office regarding the procedure and requirements of a citizens petition under city charter section eight, whereby general meetings of the citizens qualified to vote may from time to time be held according to the rights secured by the Constitution of the Commonwealth. And all such meetings may, upon the request in writing of 50 qualified voters, setting forth the purposes thereof, shall be duly called by the City Council. There's been concern expressed by the Council about the subject of conversation that may be present at the meeting. And the following will speak to those concerns as well as potential procedural guidelines to mitigate other unforeseen issues. The SJC has said criticism of public performance constituted political speech and were at the core of the speech that the First Amendment to the United States Constitution protects. Van Lu versus Stansfield. I'm not going to read all the legal numbers and references. Um, I'll make those available um, by email. Um, the SJC added that the First Amendment affords the broadest protection to such political expression in order to assure the unfettered interchange of ideas for the bringing about of political and social changes desired by the people. Although these types of public accusations may be vehement, caustic, and sometimes unpleasantly sharp, 
this form of political speech must remain uninhibited, robust, and wide open. The public accusations by Van Lu that Stanfield was corrupt and a liar, the subject of two of the four incidents of harassment, plainly were remarks about Stanfield's performance as an elected planning board member, i.e. as a public official. See Arlington versus Board of Conciliation and Arbitration, 370 Mass 769. These remarks about a local public official constituted political speech and were at the core of the speech that the First Amendment to the United States Constitution protects. See McIntyre versus Ohio Election Commission. Discussion of public issues and debate on the qualifications of candidates are integral to the operation of the system of government established by our Constitution. The First Amendment affords the broadest protection to such political expression in order to assure unfettered interchange of ideas for the bringing about of political and social changes desired by the people. In a case out of Natick, Mass, the Natick School Committee, the chair and superintendent allegedly violated the constitutional and statutory rights of two parents looking to speak on behalf of their children enrolled in the school. Spalding versus Town of Natick School Committee. The court explained that free speech jurisprudence has specified certain narrow categories of speech that are not protected. Those include threats, fighting words, and obscenities. The quote, improper and abusive remarks, quote, language is broader than those three categories and therefore was not narrowly tailored enough to pass constitutional muster. In light of the above, the citizens choosing to bring forward this meeting should be provided their right to speak with little to no interference. However, I would suggest that as this is a meeting of the citizens and not that of the council, you should pro propose someone to be appointed by the citizens to moderate the meeting, thereby limiting the involvement of the council and potential for suggesting that the council in some way was taking part. Council is merely providing a forum for speech of the public and in no way should the views during the meeting be seen as supported or opposed by members of the council unless they so choose to do so on an individual basis. I hope the above addresses your concerns. If you have any questions and or need anything further, please feel free to contact me. Now the purpose of the meeting tonight was for me to put this forth to the committee and then it will also go forth to the council as a communication from legal. Um, depending on the will of the committee tonight, um, it is my inclination to accept the recommendation of our legal counsel and seek um, a willing member of the signers of the petition to serve in the role of moderator for this meeting. Um, I would just offer as chair that I'm willing to coordinate with this person should the committee find that to be a good way to proceed um, to move forward and set up the general meeting at a time and in a manner that will work for the petitioner. So I'd like um, to open up discussion first to the committee members. And I would also uh, like to allow members of the public that may be in the waiting room or by phone um, to participate also um, by uh, suspending our rules. If I could have a motion. So you want a motion to suspend, suspend the rules to allow and open up to the public? Is that what you're looking for? Yes. All right, I'll make that motion. Second. Answer, aye. 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 So um, first to the committee members and any other counselors present, I'm interested to hear your feedback relative to the recommendation from legal about appointing one of the citizens to moderate the meeting. I would like to get your feelings and feedback on that. Uh, Madam Chair. Councilor Greeny. Yeah, I'd just like to move that we follow the recommendations of the uh, the uh, city of the uh, city council, city councilor. Uh, the, city, the city attorney. 
Yeah. Okay. And proceed forward with uh, whatever, you know, whatever we have to do. All right. Is there a second on that? Se second. Thank you. Um, is there further discussion that any further council members wish to have on this motion? Hearing none, seeing none. If somebody has a hand up on the board, I can't see it. So if you could put a real hand up. Okay, not, oh, Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Councilor Bacon. Um, I, I have no problem with the opinion from our attorney, uh, Barnes. Um, it, it certainly gives us insight as to how to proceed. I have no problem. I think the committee is making the right choice to allow a moderator from the citizens to, to do the uh, forum. Is the forum going to take place tonight? No. Okay. And it's, I, I do have questions for the city solicitor a little bit further, but not on the motion that's on the table right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any members of the public who wish to speak? And, and if you would, if you could give your name and address, and Brian, if you can let them enter. Um, I see Jordan Lemieux. Hi, Jordan. Good evening. Um, I just think the committee is doing the right thing by moving this forward. And um, if the committee so desires, I have no problem uh, sitting in as the monitor for this. And uh, I also realize, and as many of you know, I've run many meetings and I will sit uh, neutral on uh, if I am selected as the moderator. Okay, thank you. Um, Ryan, can you let us know if there are any other people either in the waiting room or on the phone or any other emails that might pertain to this? I, I do not have any other people. Okay, all right. Um, Thank you, Jordan. And I'm going to go back to my committee and I would like to accept uh, Mr. Lemieux's offer to serve as the moderator for the meeting. Madam Chair, we... do we have to move out of public session first? Well, we just suspended our rules to allow the public to speak. So we're really not in a public hearing per se. Okay, thank you. All right. So Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you Councilor Greeny. So what I would like is a motion from a member that we invite Mr. Jordan Lemieux to moderate the meeting of the general public which will be set at a future date and time. Okay. I'll make that motion. Okay. One, one question. Can I, one question to that? Sure. From the legal opinion, is it us selecting the member or the group itself selecting the member? Just for clarification. Okay. Um, she wrote, I would suggest that as this is a meeting of the citizens and not that of the council, you should propose someone to be appointed by the citizens to moderate the meeting. <clears throat> so I guess we could see if we have a volunteer and then if the citizens choose otherwise at the calling of the meeting, I guess they could make it be a different moderator. Okay, I, I just want to make sure we're clear so i'll second Councilor granny's motion i just want to make sure we follow our procedure that's all thank you and i'm just trying to find a path to move it forward so no I, okay uh, so I, i'll second uh, Councilor granny's motion okay thank you uh madam chair yes Councilor granny uh no uh is is it legal for us to uh to make that motion or does that does that motion have to come from the citizen so this is a recommendation from legal counsel 
And so in order for me to be able to move forward to coordinate and set up the public meeting that we're required to do in response to the petition, if we follow her recommendation, I need a person to be able to do that with. So if Mr. Lemieux has volunteered to be that point person, it would not stop anybody who comes to the public meeting from at that meeting choosing a different moderator um, should that be put forth on the floor at that time okay all right thank you as long as we're as long as, long as we're within the in the framework of the law i don't know um Councilor mcgee do you have a different perspective on that no no i i, I think what you said was was right on um, okay at, at the start, we're appointing someone to start the process for the petitioners. And if when that form, whatever date is set, they choose the current person or someone else, that'll that'll be on them. Our job is just to allow them to, to get there and, and help them with that process based on the legal opinion uh, by our city solicitor. So right. I think we're following it correctly. I just wanna make sure we put it on the record that way. I think yourself, just the way you said it was, it was spot on. Okay, all right, thank you. And so we have a motion and it's been seconded that Mr. Jordan Lemieux would be our um, moderator at this point in time to set up the public meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that passes 3-0. Um, Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Councilor Bacon. Uh, if I could ask those, those questions I have to the uh, city solicitor. Sure. And notice I called her our city solicitor. Yes. <laughs> About time you got it right, Joe. I'm not, I'm not I just, I've never said she wasn't the city solicitor. I just said we don't get the umbrella until we endorse her as the city solicitor. Well, um, I see acting on all the correspondence I get. So I understand. By the way. It should be permanent. <laughs> uh, Crystal, can you hear me? Here, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, and thank you, Councillor Bacon, for reading the opinion. I obviously don't have a copy of it yet. I look forward to getting it. I did listen uh, very carefully. If we could, you know, just take the opinion a little bit closer. I, I, I agree with, I think I see the approach. I understand the First Amendment. And I thank Jordan for stepping forward to be the moderator and to allow this uh, petition to go forward and allow the City Council to provide the forum. It, it makes a lot of sense. But when you read the, the request, it, it is a little bit more specific in terms of what they're asking the city council to eventually do. And my, my questions would be along the lines of the nature of if we are going into a request to ask an elected official to resign because of a potential criminal matter or a potential ethics violation, where where is the lines drawn there? And where does the city council have to step away and let the district attorneys, attorney generals, or the ethics commission step in? So, I mean, that's definitely a multi-part question. I think in general, you need to let them just have the meeting and have their discussion. Um, I think it's very similar. We've had situations where the council has put forward a recommendation for something and it's just that it's a communication that you hope somebody acts on. Um, I think the citizens are doing the same, that they're gonna put forward their opinion and you know, hope that it's acted on. However, you know, the council has their own rules that they have to follow and whether or not they can then act on that recommendation, um, that, that's gonna fall under a, a totally different umbrella than just allowing them to have a meeting and putting forward their opinions, their recommendations, their requests. Um, there's a whole bunch of, of laws and regulations about whether or not, you know, the mayor can be asked to resign or if he has to resign and processes for that. Um, I, I think it's a step-by-step -step process. Let them have their meeting, see what comes of it and go from there. Um, and I think the questions should get answered in due course after that. I don't wanna get into too much of that now. I'd rather wait and see what comes out of their meeting um, before getting into the rest of the particulars. I, I appreciate that, and, I, and it is a multifaceted question, not just what we can do, but more specifically, if there is a, a criminal accusation or an ethics violation accusation, I think we have to go by the, the law of the Commonwealth, which is we turn it over to the DA Attorney General or the Ethics Commission. But I appreciate what you're saying. By no means has your opinion 
allowed us to to necessarily adopt the motion as to what this petition could be looking for. But most important, we should be able to hear our citizens and listen to them speak. Right. And I just want to I just want to elaborate on some of the questions going around about the procedure. There really isn't anything set in stone. I think it just makes sense so that there's no intermingling between, you know, a council's meeting and a citizen's meeting. And that was my suggestion for having somebody else moderate. I actually I sought some counsel from other municipalities on it. If anyone else had done this and that was a suggestion from a couple of people just to kind of keep the barrier between, you know, the citizens having their own protected speech and what the council would be endorsing or not. Um, And so that was just to, you know, let them run a meeting just the same as you would have them appoint somebody to assist in running it. Um, So as far as the particulars of whether we appoint them or they appoint them, there's no guideline there. I think it's just as Councillor Vacan stated, it's just sort of a a fluid thing. She's going to work with someone to get a date set up and then they can kind of take it from there. But um, it was just to sort of keep that that barrier between the two different groups. As always, thank you very much for your help. Uh, uh, Chairman uh, Vacan, Chair, Chair, Chairperson Vacan. Councilor Green. Yeah, just, in other words, if I read you correct, uh, Crystal, you're just saying that we are just a legislative body. We're not a punitive body. We're just putting it, giving the citizens what they want. Uh, they want a meeting and we're just allowing them to have the meeting. Correct. I mean, it's it's part of our charter. We allow them to petition to basically have their voices heard rather than give them, you know, two minute increments in a public comment. We have this ability to allow them to really have their own meeting um, to voice things publicly. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Crystal. That this was very helpful. Um, if we have um, no further discussion or comments relative to this agenda item, I would accept a motion to table it for me. Um, assuming the committee wants to authorize me to facilitate and coordinate to set up this meeting, maybe I would ask for a motion that the committee asked me to set up the meeting and then table the matter um, for until a date certain for the meeting. Yeah, that's, uh, I'll, make, I'll make that motion. That sounds like the, the, the logical thing to do. All right, second. Okay, so the motion is that the chair, Linda Bacon, will set public meeting and the item is tabled on till that time to be determined. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, And I'll be in touch with you, Mr. Lemieux, okay? Thank you, Counselor. Thank Thank you. you. I'll leave you all to get on with your meeting. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. You also. Um, I'll take a motion on item two. Take item two. Second. Second. Favor? Aye. Aye. Item Aye. two filed by Vacan and Bartley on 62320. Ordered that a city council rule be added to the city con- that city council committees assigned in the prior term remain in effect for re-elected councilors <clears throat> when president-elect assigns new committees. Um, this was proposed back at the time where we had the bit of a lag on appointments and it would just set up a clear thing if something unexpected, unusual, or out of the control um, occurred so that there would be some continuity. Um, If the maker of the order with me wishes to weigh in or other members of the committee wish to speak on this order, Councilor McGiver, you're muted. Thank you. I was just scratching my forehead. Oh, okay. I, my only question about this order, I, I get the intent and I, I can see where it could be necessary at times, but unfortunately after an election, you know, the a committee could be disrupted with uh, counselors that didn't run or counselors that were voted out, whereas you may not have a full committee. 
I just I don't know if there any we could discuss that a little bit to see if that might be a problem. Sure. Um, the idea of it was that the people that were in the set positions, should they be reelected, would remain until the new appointment. Just a placeholder if there was a delay. But what if, if you know, say the Committee on Finance, yeah. say there's only two members out of the five or three members out of the five that carry over from the prior term? Oh, so the question of the quorum. Yeah. Well, we have our rule that allows for another counselor to sit in to make the quorum. So anyway, just speaking for myself, not for Councilor Bartley at all, it was just that there would be the ability to continue to go on and if for some unforeseen reason, there was the inability to do it in a timely manner. Thank you. Councilor Murphy. Yeah, I, I, I agree with the intent of the order. I, I also had the same concerns that Councilor McGivern just had. And so let's say the chair of the committee does not run or does not get reelected, then mm -hmm. We, you would need, I would think you'd want to also have a procedure for who's going to be the acting chair. So I'm just suggesting that, I'm assuming that an entire committee is going to get wiped out, although you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but but so I, I would suggest that maybe we also would include maybe the senior member of that committee. If the chair, chair is not reelected or does not run, I guess they wouldn't be reelected, uh, that the most senior member of the committee would become the acting chair until the president uh, nominates the new committee. So I would just um, note for the benefit of the committee that in the absence of the chair, that is the role that falls to the vice chair in the normal course of business. Not to say that perhaps they both might not be there. And in that case, I guess in the absence of a chair and a vice chair, you could go to senior member if you wanted to put in that amendment. I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to work my way through yeah. the process. And I, I mean, I think, again, I, I agree with the intent so that we don't have a five or six week lag uh, uh, that potentially could happen, as you, especially if you get many new ones, new counselors, then it's a little more difficult. But I, whichever way, I'm just, that's just a suggestion somehow to make sure that you know who is going to be uh, acting as the chair, should the chair yeah. not be reelected. Well, if, if you want to put it forth as an amendment, um, we can consider it as a committee. But I'm not on a committee, so. No, but, so I'll ask the committee, we'll hear all the comments, and then if um, the committee wishes to offer amendments, we can take a look at that. Councilor McGivern. Our, our current rules actually make the senior member of a committee, the vice chair, unless the president appoints someone else as vice chair. And sometimes the president will do it. Councilor McGee did it, I think, this past term or two terms ago, where somebody would have been like vice chair on two or three committees. So he let other people take the role of vice chair. But it's it's the rules actually say the senior member is the vice chair. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, Councilor Councilor Reagan. Councilor Graney. Yeah, if we want to go down the chain of command, you could you could. You take the chain of command and run it to the, to the city council president. If the city council president could appoint an acting chair for that particular meeting, I would think he has that power. Now you get to the point where, well, the president of the city council is wiped out. So now who is the appointing authority? I mean, we could take the chain of command and go down all night, you know, but uh, I mean, it's not going to clarify anything. I think that the president of the council should have the uh, power to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, what is the, is there anyone else who wishes to be heard on this order at this time? Not seeing anybody. Uh, what is the pleasure of the committee relative to needing this rule, wanting to amend the rule? Um, well, I'd like to uh, accept uh, Councillor Murphy's amendment that the next person in line would be the senior person of that committee. All right, okay. and that, that should be about as far as it would go. Okay. Um, so in the, so should the chair not be reelected, then 
most senior member of committee would serve as chair. Right? Yep. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, so right now we have that the committees assigned in the prior term would remain in effect for reelected counselors until the president elect assigns new committees. Should the chair um, not be reelected, then the senior member would serve as chair. So that is the order as it sits before us now. Um, so I would entertain a motion, oh, Councilor Greeny, uh, Councilor McGivern. Thank you. Uh, it's kind of a legal opinion, a legal question. Um, I'm not sure if it's a charter or our rules, but currently the city council cannot conduct any business in a new term until they, uh, until they appoint elect the president. So I, I get the intent of this order, it makes sense. But if the city council doesn't have a new president elect, I don't, I'd like to know, can the committee still go forward or, and do business? So um, if Attorney Barnes, if you could weigh in on that, would we be able to operate under a suspension of rules like we often do in that case or no? I'm sorry, Councillor, can you repeat the question? Currently at the beginning of a term, the city council can conduct no business until they appoint their president. Right. Usually that happens the morning of the inauguration. Uh, it's possible it may get delayed in a given year. If it were to be delayed and these committees were still in place because there are no new committee appointments, could the city council conduct any business without appointing? Would this committee's working on items, would that be considered the business of the city council before a president is appointed? Well, I think the rule you're trying to instill though, wouldn't your president also continue until a new one is appointed? No. No, I'm talking that that's charter. No, that cannot happen. Yeah. I know other municipalities, because this came up last year, which is sort of where the snafu happened, and other ones had said, you know, it depends on what your rules state or your charter states for people carrying over, which I think is why this came about. Um, as far as a president being elected or not, I'm not sure if that would make a, a difference. Um, well, the language is kind of specific where the city council can conduct no business until they appoint the president. Um, Councilor McGivern, if I could just note, um, all of the committees are only recommending bodies to the council. So they're not really completing any business. They're only recommending bodies to the council. I, I agree, I agree 100% with that. I just, I was kind of throwing it out as a question yeah well if you're stating uh, do you happen to know the section it is off the top of your head this you're saying no, it's very I'll, specific I'll find that it they, you, Chris, so I don't. They, because if you're saying you know they can't conduct any business that it would be hard pressed to say that they should continue having any meetings without a new president and it would really force that election to happen um but then you wouldn't have that delay between you know the president being elected and then them appointing committees you could continue business until yeah. the new committees are appointed but you well, may still be stuck. point is the committee could continue with their 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 work on an item but they would not have a city council to refer it to that could do anything until they appointed a new president correct no, no i agree i i definitely understand where she's coming from we've run into that you know advising versus uh final action with the committees before so that's why I'm curious Madam what that Chair. language really states about the president. Madam Chair. Councilor Green, are, are you all set, Councilor Green? I'm Bigger? all set, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Greeny? The first order of business on inauguration day is the appointment of the president to the city council. That's so the only thing on the agenda. So I think that, the, you know, this point will take, it'll take care of itself. Any business that happens before inauguration day is the business of the all council. So now you have the inauguration day, you've got a new council. Our first order of business is to appoint the president 
and there we go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if there are no further questions or no further points of discussion, I would um, entertain a motion to make a recommendation to the city council that we add this rule as amended. Can you, can you read the, the whole rule? Just so sure. we got it. Uh, Thank you. Okay. That city council committees assigned in the prior term remain in effect for reelected councilors until the president elect assigns new committees. Should the chair of a committee not be reelected, then the senior member will serve as chair. Okay, thank you. Sure. Can, it, does anybody want to make a motion to recommend that or? Yeah, I'll, I'll recommend that to the full committee. Okay. Second. It, Second. Okay. So the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so move to take item one. three off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item three filed by Councilor Bartley, five five twenty, ordered that Holyoke determine the voting location for Ward three, Precinct A, for both nine one twenty and the eleven three meet um, elections, ASAP, which has come and gone. The order is written in light of the last minute change to the South Street Fire Station polling location for the 519 special election caused by the vendor's concerns due to COVID-19. Further ordered that Holyoke also consider the location of 1B as this too was amended due to the property owner's COVID-19 concerns. Um, Councilor Bartley, this is your order and I know those dates have come and gone. Um, what is your pleasure? I know there's a, compa a somewhat companion order on the next item. Yeah, there, there, there is, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, it, this is, um, I mean, it, it worked out pretty well, I, I have to say, but I did get I did get calls and emails. Are we still voting at, at Metcalf? So there's, there's, there's certainly not um, full understanding of War Street voters, but, um, I mean, I, I don't think Ward 3 should be, should, should have one polling location. I, I think it, it should have, um, should have the two. Um, so in fact, I, I would, I'd rather have all wards have two polling locations, but um, I, I think the other order number four is probably more <clears throat> relevant. Okay. To, uh, to the, to the future. I mean, what, what, what can we do? I mean, it, this is all we can, all we can, it, it would have been nice if we had some some additional feedback, but we're we're not getting any feedback from um, uh, fr from anyone. But I I really can't blame the uh, ambulance company because we don't. There's too many unknowns with the COVID. So, um, right. you know, I, I I guess with with this we could you know probably just move it along just uh, um, just to get out of the jacket. I I, I don't really. Think we can really do anything with that? I think I'm more interested in in talking about number four, Madam Chair, than than number three. Because, yeah, so Madam Chair, I like to move remove uh, with remove to withdraw uh, item number three. Um, can we I just say it's complied with? Want we'll to make a motion that's complied with? Or complied with? Yeah. With um, to me, it seems like it's been complied with in terms of the communication and the clarification relative to it. If the maker finds that so, yeah, well, yeah. However you want to do it, that's believe me. I'm, okay, I'm, so I'm, I'm hearing a motion from Councilor Greeny that the order has been complied with, seconded by Councilor McGee. Second. Am I hearing that correctly? Yep. Okay. yep, that's fine. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. so that's found complied with three zero. Thank you. Move to take item four off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, Item four, filed by Councilor Bartley, ordered that Holyoke set up a commission to look at all of the polling locations for every ward for future elections. Holyoke should ensure that voting locations have excellent access for voters and great amenities for our poll workers. So, um, Councilor Bartley. Yeah, uh, I, 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 so I, I would certainly want to know if, if, if there's any appetite to set this up. I, I don't want to, I don't want to dictate it. I, I mean, to me, if you could have three or five people. 
of, of the community and um, they don't have to be elected officials, but it'd be nice to get three or five volunteers to, you know, one could certainly be an elected official or they could all be elected officials. I, I don't care, but if, if there's, if there's an appetite to, um, to, to sort of, to sort of look at this, uh, to sort of look at this uh, situation, because we've got, we've got some, some changes coming forward. I, I, I think with, um, as in Ward 3 and Ward 1, we, we, we had some consolidation due to COVID. I, I think that also we have some buildings that maybe could be utilized uh, a little better if we, and then, then we've also got to put this in, in context of the, of the new potential uh, wards, right? Um, because because of the uh, because of the census, so I, I don't know what I've never I haven't been here in prior times when there was a, a census could, when we could have altered the ward map a little bit. So I I guess I'd want to I guess I'd want to hear about hear about that if and I'll just finish this way that if there if there are counselors that just say listen this is you know let it be then you know, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get offended by that either. It, it just just seems like if if we're if we're here, I, I don't want to make a standing committee. I just want to make an ad hoc uh, committee that could uh, that could report back to uh, charter and rules. If we, we could we could meet um, you know, once or once or twice or three or four times, and and just discuss potential just potential sites, and that's that's really what I want to do. So then when we do come around for, um, I, I don't think we'll have new wards for. Uh, for 21, but we'll certainly have them for 22 potentially, when the census data is uh, is released and we have to reallocate. So, um, so anyway, that that's that. Uh, I just I like to hear from others if it if they think it makes sense. Uh, if if not, then not. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Murphy. Yeah, I I think it makes sense to take a look at nothing against what we've done. Obviously, I thought we did a pretty good job doing this. Uh, but I, I do think it's important that we look to see how do we make things as convenient as possible in terms of ter or where it is. Uh, and, I'll, and I think the, the comment about trying to make it comfortable for the poll workers and, and that all makes sense. And just one other thing, and I don't know if, if Councilor Bartley is hoping that the fire station at Ward 3 would still be part of it. I do, I spoke with the chief for us last week about, and the ambulance company has already told him they would like to be back to where they used to be in all the stations as soon as this virus situation is somewhat under control. Who knows when that's going to be? But I know that's their goal is to actually get back to where uh, they had an ambulance at each of the stations. So, but I think it's a good I think it's a good idea to talk about what we've done well, what hasn't gone well, uh, what we could do better, and uh, and take citizen input. What would help you get? To, and I think, and I don't know if this is an accurate statistic. I think we had only 58% or 59% voting in this election, which obviously Ooh. is way down from what, and, and again, I don't know if that, that I've, I've heard that a couple of times that, and you, know, you look at other places and we're at 75, 80, 85%. So maybe we need to find a way to make it easier. I don't know, but I think it's a good Thank order and trying to find a way to make uh, as convenient as possible and safe as possible and getting citizen input, all of those are great things. Thank Madam you. Chair. Councilor Graney. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, we appoint somebody from the council to form an ad hoc committee to study this situation. Okay. Um, we'll have to be a little bit more specific, I think, though, unless we're going to refer it to the president of the council to yeah, we can, we can refer it to the council. Yeah, to refer it to the president council to. to to uh, appoint an ad hoc committee or to formulate okay. uh, to, uh, an ad hoc committee to uh, study the situation and get back to, uh, to the council. Okay. All we so want to do is make it more convenient for the public. And and I'll take that as a motion, Councilor Graney? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, Linda, can I ask a question? Okay, but, Council, wait, Linda? Yes? Is this- Yeah, hey, this is Jim Leahy, how oh, are you? I'm sorry, Councilor Leahy, welcome. Um, sure, you're recognized. You have a question? Councilor Leahy appears to be dropped. When Councilor Leahy uh, comes back in, 
We'll recognize him. This is Madam Chair. Oh, oh. is he back? Yeah, Council. I also had filed an order ago regarding um, mobile. I I, had... I I cannot understand him. I think it, it, last night he had technical difficulty as okay. well with the audio. Okay. But if I may, I'll when, whenever ready. Sure. You are you. Okay. Yeah. Are you knowing what counselor? I, I know what I know. He's going to get get out, and I was going to bring it up as well. I have. Okay. I'm I'm all in favor of uh, setting up a, a committee. I, I think it's a great order. Um, I know in the past, from my personal experience in Ward Six, when we had um, polling places just shut down on us, and we were scrambling, we looked mm -hmm. to as a an example the new senior center, which was brand new back then. Mm -hmm. And the state fired back on us and said no. So I, I'd hope they're a little more, the state's a little more forgiving in a sense of like the borderlines and stuff to allow us to get uh, polling locations, kind of like the senior center that are open, nice, and, and you know would be great locations for for people to vote. Um, so I think it's it's time for us to look at stuff like this because there there has been pushback not blaming the schools but the schools you know have pushed back in the sense of you know wanting to be able to use their gyms for the kids and not shut down for elections so i think we really have to look at this and, and see what options are available because there are certain uh, issues that pop up every year and what counselor Leahy was going to get as he, he filed an order about the the mobile uh polling locations that are seen in in other areas okay. So that's something that we might have to look at. Like, you know, if you look at what happened uh, to Councilor Bartley's ward where we had to shut down the fire station, could we have right. moved up one of those move, uh, mobile um, units to that area so that way people aren't, you know, scrambling at fire spots. They're just walking to the same spot and using uh, the mobile unit to kind of meet the, the need. Mm -hmm. so I think okay. we have to get a discussion on all these things. Okay. Councilor Vincent. Okay. Uh, uh, I see Councillor Bartley wanted to be recognized, and then I'll come to you, oh. Councillor Graney. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I think this is a, a really good discussion, and, and I, I, I love the tenor of it, and, and I think it makes sense to um, to uh, to have the council president who can maybe reach out to the clerk who might have a poll worker or two. We've got pretty good turnout in certain wards, and in other wards, it's pretty not so great and uh and you know why is that so is is it is it the i mean why is that i, mean, I don't know is it, it you know maybe maybe it's part of the polling the polling locations are are part of the problem it, it um should we have should we have more polling locations should we have maybe in wars one and two maybe we should have more polling locations to to try to get more people interested in voting and and making it more convenient because this this cannot, Madam Chair, this this cannot carry on. I mean, I said it before. In fact, I remember I was I was I was talking to former Councilor O'Neill, um, even before I got on the board, and 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 he was he was point he's the one that originally pointed out to me just how many councilors are from Ward Seven mm -hmm. that were on the 15 member board at, at the time, and it was it was seven of them, seven out of the 15 for for a number of years. And, and and Councillor O'Neill it was it just an incredibly intelligent and very bright lawyer and and um, he 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 was saying this is a potential for a federal lawsuit and it wouldn't be the first time there was a, a federal lawsuit against the city of Holyoke relative to voting rights and, uh, and 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 I'm not I'm not suggesting that he was threatening that Madam Chair I, I'm 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 not I, I'm just saying that. <laughs> That you know we we can we can see the numbers we, we know where 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 people are voting in this city and we know where they're not voting and there there's just it, we we have to do better I, I I just believe that so if we can if we can potentially have at least two locations at each ward and maybe up to you know multiple location locations as a suggestion I I know that that could impact the the budget for. Uh, for poll workers, um, but maybe we can get get creative. I I don't know what the 
you know what what the law allows and maybe we can uh yeah, experiment with that, but with with as part of this this committee, and, and I don't want to make this whole you know take minutes and and all the rest of that. I I just want to what, what I what I really like to see from this is is get get you know five or six appointed and and just come up with ideas to brainstorm about about locations and about number of polling spots in in each of the seven wards, and and then at least recommend them to uh, whomever makes the final decision. To uh, to determine where uh, polling locations are set, and I would think that the city council would have a big role in that, uh, as well as the city clerk and the mayor, and uh, and maybe even Mr. Galvin. I, I I don't know how. I mean, since he runs the whole show, so maybe he he'd have some thoughts. So so that's it. Uh, hopefully we can. Yeah, I mean, my goal would be to to at least get some kind of a commission set up by uh, by the end of the year, and then then to have it have it meet. Uh, through um, through the spring and, and and get a final recommendation for uh, you know by by the end of this fiscal year. I, I, if we could do that, if we could come together uh, with, with a with a halfway decent list uh, by by June thirtieth, twenty one, I I think we've done a good service and, and that'll that'll set up that'll set up uh, set us up for when we have to reorganize the wards and and uh, we'll think of a whole bunch of good locations based upon parking convenience for voters. Um, lighting. I, I mean, I don't know, uh, but we, we've got some good spots in Ward Three and and in, and in other wards where uh, that, that are underutilized. And and I, I heard what the president said about about uh, about the schools. And yeah, we don't want to make this adversarial. We we, we want to work in cooperation with the uh, with the schools. And it seems to work beautifully at Metcalf. And. and uh, I'm, I'm just. I just hope. I mean, 58 percent is decent, but in a presidential turnout, when you see other towns up to, up in the 80s, I don't know. I think we can do better. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bartley. Um, is there anyone else who wishes to comment at this time? Not seeing. Yeah, this it. is. A, oh, oh, yeah, Councillor Bartley. I'm sorry. Out of sight, out of mind. That's so <laughs> quickly. Just, just, just to mention to the, uh, the committee. Unforeseen problems do arise with the with these locations. For instance, this last election at Sullivan School, the entryway into the school, into the cafeteria was fine. It was handicap accessible, no problem. But unfortunately, you didn't go out the same way because of the COVID. We had to exit out through the back door. And out through that back door, it was a very rocky ride with the wheelchair. The, uh, the tarred area back there, the asphalt, and there were many ruts and bumps and so forth that come around the school. So that was problematic uh, in this election. So those are the little problems that hopefully we could iron out, you know, uh, with, a, with a study from, from committee with input from the citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Graney. Um, so based on the feedback I've heard from the committee, I would be interested in entertaining a motion to recommend to the council, would somebody like to make one? So I, I, was it that we motion to have this referred to the president to set up an ad hoc committee to study the polling locations and come back by June? Yes. 2021 with a recommendation on, I think that's what I heard, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, the committee report, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 That passes 3-0. Thank you very much. Um, I would be interested in entertaining a motion relative to the remainder of, let's see, items five through nine to take up as a package. So moved. Five through nine is a package. All in favor? Aye. 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 So these items have been in the jacket for two years. Uh, they were filed by Councilor Roman. Um, one was to adopt term limits for all elected positions to not have more than four terms. That's item five. Item six that we review in collaboration with the clerk, the processes for a citizen's petition that appear in the city charter, making the process more streamlined and standard. Item seven, order the non-binding ballot 
question be placed on the next election ballot? Should 16 and 17 year old residents be allowed to vote in municipal elections? Item eight, these are all filed by Council Roman. Ordered that the city of Holyoke place a binding referendum changing the charter to make terms of all remaining local municipal elected officials not elected to four year terms to switch and become four year terms. Item nine, ordered that the city council amend through ordinance or charter change any and all community agreements made by the executor must be ratified and approved by city council in order for them to take effect. All previous agreements would be grandfathered in and not need council ratification. Um, well, I will go Madam Chair. Little... Yes, Council Greeny. Would it be possible that we recommend a move to withdraw the, these items? And if any other counselor that are now sitting on the council want to resubmit any of these items, they could resubmit it to the Charter Committee? Is that a motion? Yes. Hey. Okay. Is there a are we second? Saying, it would essentially are we be saying, giving leave to withdraw, right, Councilor Greeny? Right. Yes. That's not going to say leave to withdraw. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, and I'm not seeing any further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, item 10. Um, was filed by Councilor Sullivan 2618 ordered that the deep oh I'm sorry I need a motion to take it up <laughs> motion on item 10 <laughs> thank Second. you all in favor aye aye, thank aye. You. Uh, filed by Councilor Sullivan 2618 ordered that the DPW commissioners and sewer commissioners meet with the council to discuss merger or elimination of sewer commissioner and the sewer deficit Councilor Sullivan Yep. Uh, thank you. Um, so this is um, a little while ago and things have changed a little bit. Um, and uh, possibly Councillor McGivern can help me with this. When I originally filed this order um, two years ago, we had a deficit in the sewer fund of $964,000. Um, right now, as of today, and I don't quite understand this. Uh, and I, I only found out at four o'clock, so I haven't had a chance to investigate it. But we have a positive balance of thirty-four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So I'm not quite sure. First of all, we've had to write off so many things um, uh, uh, and subtract them from our free cash. If the nine hundred sixty-four thousand is still on the balance sheet of the city or if the whole thing has been written off. Um, and I don't quite understand uh, if the 34,000, if we have a positive balance and everybody's paying their bills, it should be a zero balance, not a positive balance. It, is that additional monies off of that 964 original deficit uh, that is still being collected or has some of it been written off or where it stands right now? So. Um, I, I didn't have time to look further into it. I don't. I don't know if uh, Councilor McGivern has uh, any information on this. I might just need to leave this uh, tabled for the time being oh. until we can get an update on this from the uh, auditor. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Could we refer it to the finance committee? Uh, would you Would you like it to be referred over to finance? Um, the only thing I can offer is that I remember in the rate discussions that part of the consideration was that they would need money in the sewer fund for upgrades to the sewer system so that if there was extra money in there from the rates, it wouldn't simply be a zero in terms right. of their goals. Right. And and from what I from what I learned today also, that 34 th right now, the the reason we've made pro we we have made substantial progress. Um, but right now, because of COVID, none of the um, none of the shutoffs are being done, and it'll probably be several months. So we, we don't know which direction that's going to go in uh, w without the ability to do shutoffs right now either. But that's a bit of a different topic, and I don't quite understand why that part of it's sitting in charter and rules anyway. So if it's okay with the chair, I'd be happy with that piece of it being sent to finance. Well, it would. And Joe, I'll defer to Joe on that. Okay, 
Councillor McGivern. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's kind of a two-part order here. Uh, it, the answer, you know, yes, the uh, the budget is operating in the black. A lot of it is thankful to that small rate increase that we that we approved, uh, I think, in a year or a year and a half ago. And you know, the the carryover is is good. Just a reminder that we're still under the mandate of the Clean Water Air Act, and there's still a lot of work that has to be done. So. You know the, the carryover. You know is there, there's a limit to how much you can carry over, how much surplus you can carry over. But most of it, I think, is going to be eventually put towards the uh, CSO projects and the mandates with the Connecticut River itself. But the the gist of this order about eliminating the sewer commission, and that's either you know belongs in this committee. Um, I think the auditor has filed. It won't be on. Was, it won't be on the. It wasn't on the agenda, but be on our next agenda. The uh, latest audit, uh, complete audit report for, I believe we're getting closer. It's like fiscal 2019, but certainly there'll be stuff in there to discuss, and we can file an order to ask for a more in-depth in discussion of where we stand with the uh, sewer budget and the sewer surplus versus a sewer deficit. It's good news, no matter how you look at it. But I, I agree with you; it does deserve a. A, a more close look at, but I think as far as eliminating the sewer commission, that belongs here. So, I, I, I completely, I completely agree with with that part. Yeah. So I, I, we could just ignore the financial piece for now and deal with the uh, the, the makeup of the commission, if that pleases the chair. Right. And so, if the maker of the order wishes to continue to pursue the issue of the potential merger of sewer and or elimination of the sewer commission with that would properly remain here and we could table it if you wish to pursue it further well um i'm not sure the need to table it i i can tell you what i know and where i feel it should go okay i i think the right now um we, we have a very good uh, DPW commission. Uh, the ninety-nine percent of the work of the sewer, and we also have a stormwater commission. And it's the same. Number one, it's all all three boards are the same people right now. Uh, that doesn't mean it could be that way in the future and stuff. But back when we originally had a sewer commission, we had a sewer department. We, we don't. It's all outsourced right now to Suez. Um, and we have a hard time as you know, number one, we should be trying to streamline government, but number two, we have a hard time finding people to fill boards anyways. So to have to fill six more seats from, from a limited pool of people willing to volunteer, uh, and really all of the work done by both of these should be falling under the DPW anyways, in my opinion. Okay. Um, so I'm wondering, um, Attorney Barnes, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, thank you. Um, do you know if there's any legal reason why we have to have separate boards in this manner? You're going to have to wrap me back to the original part. I have children okay. still running around. Okay. <laughs> so we're looking at DPW Commissioner... Oh and then the separate sewer commissioners, which are set up as a separate board, but to Councillor Sullivan's point, they're the same people. I know sometimes things are set up that way for legal reasons, but we're wondering if there's any useful purpose to them anymore with the Suez contract. I don't know that off the top of my head. I'd have to look into it, whether oh. there's some statutory reason that those boards or commissions are set up. All right. So, Councillor Sullivan, would you like us to um, put that to Attorney Barnes as a question to come back to at our next meeting to see if then we could maybe answer that and make a recommendation to the council? That, that would be fine by me. All right. So, could I have a motion to um, request legal to weigh in on the order relative to the need for separate DPW commissioners and a sewer commissioner or a sewer board? or whatever it is, separate and, by And if we could add stormwater to that. Stormwater, okay. 
So I'd like I'll to make end- a motion. I'll yeah. make a motion that uh, we recommend these recommendations of Councillor Sullivan regarding the sewer commission and the the other commissions to go to the uh, to go to the. Uh, uh, the city attorney to study them and come back to the uh, committee with a recommendation. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, so, yes, Attorney what? Barnes? Yes? That wasn't me. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought it was you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so. We have a motion made and seconded to request legal to weigh in on these boards. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then I'd entertain a motion to table so we can receive her response for our next meeting. Motion to the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so this remains tabled and now we saved the oldest for last <laughs> <Councilor McGee. laughs> 3 20 2012 <laughs> here's going back in time order make a motion or to remove or take it up okay thank you a second. second all in favor aye no, item no. 11 filed by councilor mcgee 3 20 12 ordered that the newly formed charter group look into the pros and cons of combining the personnel department with the school department, HGE, and other personnel offices in the city into one human resources division. Councillor McGee? Yeah, we, we've taken this up a few times. Yeah. Um, and we've had the school department in and HGE, mm -hmm. and uh, no one really has gotten back to us with the information that we requested that's why we kept tabling it but i mean it's 2012 so i'll just say it's complied with and then i'll come back okay. with another order later in another fashion but you know th th this committee has, has brought this up quite a few times and we seem to uh not be getting the information that we need so this is complied with and we'll just i'll come back at another another time Okay, uh, do I have a second on that? I'm complied. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three, zero. Okay, that brings us to the end of our agenda. I will follow up relative to the meeting of the citizens. And um, thank you all for your participation and discussion. And I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.